and welcome back. In this episode, we are gonna be talking about CSS links, lists, we'll be covering a little bit more on IDs, classes, and then we'll also be talking about something called pseudo elements. It's pretty simple to grasp, so let's just go ahead and jump into it. So first things first, let's talk about styling some links. So we already created some links in the previous episodes, but let's go ahead and just remove our boxes for now. And we're going to create a new link. And this href is going to just go to google.com. And we'll just give it a text of click me. And now to stylize the link, we could actually just add the A selector and then we could add our specific link. So we could say color blue, but there are four specific link states that I want to talk about. So the first state is the A link, and this is just kind of the default. It's like an unvisited link. Then we also have our A visited. So if this link has been visited by this user, it will be a certain color. So we could make this color, let's just say orange. And then we have a hover, and this is exactly as it sounds. When you hover over the link, you are going to get these styles. So we could say color green, and then we also have a active. And active is when you are holding down the click uh, before you actually go to the link. So I'll show you in just a second. So let's just add color and we'll say black here. Okay, so let's go back to our page and reload. And you're gonna see that we have all of these links right here. You can see that they are actually all orange because it looks like every single link has been visited before. And as we hover over the link, you can see that the color is green. And you can see as we hold it down, the color is actually black. So we can go back to the home and then to the blog. So let's add a link that maybe I haven't visited before. So I'm just gonna pull this out of my hat and say radsauce.com. So if I reload, I have not been to that site and hopefully nothing bad, okay. Looks like the site doesn't even exist. So you can see that the link is blue. And if I click that and come back here, I think that we're actually not seeing the visited because it's actually not even a link. Um, but if that was a correct link, we would then see that that would be orange as well. So those are the four default states of a link. Typically, whenever I am coding a website, I will just use the default A selector and then I will use the hover most of the time. Uh, but I just wanted to quickly cover that just so that way you know if you see that in some other style sheets or if you want to create some hover effects yourself. So now that we have links down, let's go ahead and talk about lists. So I'm going to create an unordered list underneath this link. And how about we add some food items? So I will say hot dog, and we'll do a hamburger. And how about some French fries or just fries? Okay, so if I reload here, you can see that we have our list right here. So I'm gonna actually open up developer tools and show you how we can stylize unordered lists and lists. So how about I bump this up, both of these just a little bit, so you can see this a little bit more. So if I were to hover over this link and actually select the unordered list, there are some default styles that it has, display block, list style type is disk, and then we also have some margin and padding. So let's go ahead and change the list style type. And by default, this is disk, but we could change this to circle, and you can see that those turn into little circles. We then have a few other list style types that we can add. You can kind of just go through these and explore. You can see as I'm going through the list, it is updating. We have some kind of weird characters right there that you can add for your list. Uh, but typically you'll probably just stick with the disc or you may even choose the circle. Um, but what you could do instead is you could say list style image and you could actually pass it a specific image. So you can create your own bullet points or your own maybe check marks if you want. Uh, it's up to you how you want to stylize it. We could also say list style type of none, and then you can see that we actually don't have any bullet points. And all of these styles can also be applied to an ordered list. So unordered list and ordered list are very similar. 
We could then say we want the padding to be zero pixels and margin of zero pixels. So we could always just reset that. But I'm going to put back the margin and I want to show you that each of these list items are display block. So it will take up the whole width. We could then instead say that we want the list item to be display inline block. And if I were to apply those styles to all of these list items, you'll see that they are actually showing up right next to each other. And now we have our unordered list right here in a horizontal fashion as opposed to displaying them vertically. And sometimes you'll see that people will use like a menu and whenever they display a menu, like how we have the home and the blog right here, sometimes they might use an unordered list and just say display inline block. And then that's how you'll view the menu. Okay, so that is the basics of stylizing unordered lists and ordered lists. Again, you'll want to kind of just open up developer tools, play around and get familiar with it yourself. So the next thing that I want to talk about, and we already covered this a bit, was just IDs and classes. So we said that if we had a div with an ID of box, we typically only have a one of those. So if we have this box, I could then represent that with a hash. I could say B-O-X. And again, we could give it some styles. And of course, if we reload the page, we then have our box right there. So then we also have classes. So then if we wanted to have multiple boxes, we could change this to the class syntax. And we could say div class equals box. And then we could duplicate that a few times. If we reload, looks like it's one long box, but they're actually stacked on top of each other. So the reason why I wanted to cover classes and IDs again is because I want to show you how CSS works. So CSS, as we already stated before, stands for cascading style sheets, which means that these styles cascade. So you can see here that we have this paragraph with a color of blue. Let's then add another quick paragraph. We'll say awesome sauce right there and reload. And of course this inherits the paragraph color blue, but if we wanted to give this a specific class, so we could say class, and I could say red, paragraph, we could then down here say p.red-paragraph, and I could make this color red. And if I were to save that and then we reload, you can see that the color is red. And as you go down the CSS, it's basically, like it says, cascading all of your styles. So if we were to actually change this again later on, and say that red paragraph, this doesn't make much sense, but say that we were to make this orange and we reload, you can see that that is actually orange now as opposed to red because it basically went in sequence from we had, we declared it here and then we declared it here again. So this means that you can have classes inside of classes and you can get very specific with your styles. So perhaps inside of here, we have a span element And we'll say that any paragraph with a span element will have specific class. So let's go ahead and just say, we want all of our spans to have a font size, we'll say 40 pixels. So if I save that and reload, you can see that that is really large. But then we could say, we want a paragraph and any spans inside of that paragraph, we want to have a font size of 20 pixels. So if we reload, you can see that it's actually 20 pixels now as opposed to 40 because we were more specific with this style. We could then say p.red-paragraph and span, and let's make this a font size of 100 pixels. And I actually want to carry this at the very top of this span. Just so you can see if we reload, we get 100 pixels. And the reason being, even though the last one that we specified was the font size of 20 pixels, this one took precedence because this one was more specific. We had p.red-paragraph and span element. So the more specific you are, that one will take precedence over all the other styles. Okay, and one last thing for this video is I want to talk about pseudo elements. So let me go ahead and just clean up some of this right here. 
And let me add another paragraph down here with some lorem ipsum. So I'll say lorem, and I want to create a few lorem ipsums just to make this a larger paragraph. So how about I save that, we reload and we have our paragraph right there. Now, pseudo elements allow you to select different sections of an element. So let me go ahead and just give you a specific example. So let's say for our paragraph, we'll say the first line, and this is considered a pseudo element. You typically have two colons, and that is giving the element a little bit more details. So it is considered a pseudo element. And this is called a first line pseudo element that we can apply specific styles to. So maybe I want the first line to be a color of red. And if I reload, you can see that we have the first line is red in all of these paragraphs. We can then do first letter. And if I were to save that and reload, you can see that the first letter actually takes those styles. And the next pseudo element that I wanna talk about is the first and last pseudo element. So to explain this to you, I actually want to bring back the unordered list. So let's bring back our food unordered list. We'll say we had hot dog and we had hamburger and fries. Okay, so we have our unordered list back and inside of my style.css, I am saying that I want the list item and I want to get the first child and let's change the background color to green and let's add some white text. So how about I save that and reload and the first child element is actually, I believe that should be one colon right there and you'll just have to look up specifically the different pseudo elements, how you can stylize those. So if I save that and we reload, we now have a green background with white text. We can also do last child. So if I reload, then the last child in the list item has a green background with white text. And there's one more that we can do, which is called the nth child. And you can specify any specific item. So you could say, I want the second one to have these styles. We could then say odd or even, and that would then either choose the odd or even element. Okay, and one more pseudo element before we close out this video. So this pseudo element is called the before and after. So we have every single element has a before and after pseudo element. So you can't actually see it, but we can actually apply some content before and after every element. So let's go ahead and give this link a class of my link. Now I want to say a dot my link and let's just give this a color of green just so we can see that those styles are only applied to this link and indeed they are. So we have this pseudo element called before and what we can actually do is we can say that we want to add some content before and maybe I want to add the less than sign. And if I reload, you can see that that actually gets applied. We could then say after, and we could add the greater than, and you can see that that gets applied to that element. Now, sometimes what people will do with these before and after, maybe we want to add a specific display block with a width of, we'll say 30 pixels and height of 30 pixels. And let's give it a background of red. So if I were to reload that, you can actually see that it looks like we have a little box under there. And sometimes people will do this to create, I don't know, they could create something after the element or before it could be an underline. And you can add these different pseudo elements before and after any element in your HTML. Okay, so that wraps up CSS links, lists. We covered a little bit more about IDs, classes, and the precedence of your CSS and which styles get applied to which elements. And then we also covered pseudo elements. So that is it for this video. And that is kind of the basics of CSS in general, but there are going to be a few more things that I'll show you throughout the next couple of videos that we'll be creating. The next one that I wanna talk about is Flexbox. And Flexbox is really cool for 
allowing you to create these really nice layouts and it makes organizing your elements super easy. So I'm excited to show you that. And then we'll also, I think, go through and make our blog look kind of nice just because it looks pretty janky right now. Uh, but we'll go through, make the blog look quite a bit nicer. And I think you'll learn some things along the way as I start adding some more images and some more content to our final site. So that's it for this video. I hope you're enjoying learning HTML and CSS, and I will see you in the next video.